What's up everybody? I'm Tim from Timber Ridge Gifts and this video is going to be all about pillar candles. So I've got some videos on my channel showing you how to uh, liven up a, just a basic pillar candle but I didn't have any videos on my channel showing how to make the pillar candle to begin with. So that's what we're going to do in this video just make a basic pillar candle. So let's go and start with the supplies we're going to need. Uh, first thing we're going to need is our wax. Uh, you cannot use soy wax with a pillar candle. It's just too soft. You're not going to be able to handle it and it's not going to work out well for you. You're going to need paraffin or at least a parasoy blend. For this one, we're going to use Kentucky 143. It's a paraffin pillar wax from Rustic Essentials. So while that's melting down, let's check out everything else. We're going to need our mold. Uh, they make tons of different sizes of these. I've actually got a video showing you how to make your own. So if you want to check that out, just follow that link right there. But for this one, we're going to use a four by four and a half mold. We're going to need our mold release. Now, if you've never made a pillar candle before, uh, let me tell you that they can be a pain to get out of the mold sometimes. So this is going to go a long way and save you a lot of headache in the end. Next, we're going to need our wick. Now, every mold is going to be different, so I can't cover all the sizes for you. If you're curious about what size wick to use, just consult any wick guide. Most of the uh, major candle suppliers have one on their website that you can check out. A uh, couple different wicking options. You can buy the uh, spooled wick, which is going to cut down a lot on waste. Or you can use a pre-tab. I prefer just to use a pre-tab just because I seem to have more of those around. So we're not going to need the tab obviously. So we're just going to go ahead and cut it off. Alright, now that wick's ready to go. Now before we go ahead and wick this candle, I'll show you one more wicking option. That is the wick pin. Now all you're going to do to use that, just plug the hole at the bottom. We're going to use some mold putty. We'll talk about that here in a second. Basically all you would do is just plug that hole, drop your wick pin in, Go ahead and pour the candle. Once it unmolds, you're going to pull that wick pin out and you can feed your wick up through the bottom. But a lot of people aren't going to have those, so we're going to keep it pretty basic for this tutorial. So all we're going to do to wick this candle, we're just going to feed our wick up through the bottom. Feed it up till there's about a quarter inch showing. We're going to bend that over to the side. Now we're going to take our wick putty. This is basically just to clog the hole. You can use a lot of different things. They sell wick plugs that'll fit in there. Uh, a lot of people use duct tape, but I think Mold Putty works the best. It's fairly inexpensive. You can buy it just about at any hobby shop or candle supply store, and it's reusable. So we're just gonna take a piece of our Mold Putty, just cover that wick on the bottom, get it mashed on there pretty good so it creates a good seal. We're gonna go ahead and pull our wick tight. Attach the wick bar to it to hold it in place. And that's just about set. We're going to go ahead and spray it with our uh, mold release. You don't want to use too much and have it pull up in the bottom, just enough to barely coat the sides. But this one's all set, ready to go. We're going to wait for our wax to melt down and we'll be ready to pour. Okay, so one last tip before we pour is to determine how much wax we're going to actually need for our mold. Now to determine the volume of this mold, there is actually a mathematical formula that you can use, but trust me, the last thing Susan Wojcicki wants is for me to start teaching you people math. Uh, Susan Wojcicki is the CEO of YouTube. Anyhow, I'm not a math guy, so we're just going to do this the old country boy way. Uh, all we're going to do is just take our mold, put it on our scale, zero it out, and we're just going to fill it up with water. Okay, that got us to just about 27 ounces. So, so we know this mold holds 27 ounces. Uh, because we know this wax is going to shrink, we're going to go and step it up just a little bit. I always like to add another 10%. So 10% of 27 is going to be 2.7. So we've actually got 30 ounces in here. That's going to be more than enough to fill this mold with very little waste at the end. All right, so we're just about at our pouring temperature. We've got our dye added. We're going to go ahead and add our fragrance oil. For this one, we're going to be using Fruit Loops from Rustic Essentials. It smells just like the cereal. All right, so we're all mixed up. We're at our pouring temperature. We've got our mold all set up. Now we're just going to pour. We're just going to use a nice, slow, steady pour. We're going to fill it all the way to the rim. Okay, we're filled all the way with the rim. You can see I've got a little bit left in there. We're going to save that for a repour. Because it's a paraffin-based wax, 
as it cools it's going to shrink quite a bit uh, you'll see that after this cools it's going to be like a kind of a funnel going down the middle it's no problem we're just going to reheat our wax re-pour over the top of it it'll melt together and bind it'll look like one candle nobody will ever know the difference let's go ahead and wait for this to pour we'll be all set okay so we're ready for the next step of our uh, pillar mold process let's go ahead and pull the wick bar off you can see the shrinkage that I talked about earlier. You can see how the middle is kind of sunk down. No worries though. It's totally natural, especially with paraffin wax. So at this point we can go ahead and uh, trim our wick off. This is going to be the bottom of our candle. So it's not important that the wick poke all the way out through the bottom. So this has been set up for about three hours. Still kind of warm to the touch. That's about where we want it. Now we can just take a metal rod, we're going to poke what's called relief holes. That's going to allow any uh, air bubbles or pressure that's trapped inside to go ahead and release. Also when we pour our new wax on top of it, it's going to be able to fill it and it's going to bind a lot better together as one candle. So we've got the extra wax that we had earlier melted down. Now we're just going to re-pour. Fill it to the rim again. Okay. Now we're just going to let this cool again. Once it cools, it's going to be binded together as one solid candle, and it'll be ready to come out of the mold. Okay, so it's the next day. Everything's completely cooled. We're ready to unmold our pillar candle now. So to do that, all we got to do is just take our uh, mold putty or whatever we use to uh, plug the hole off at the bottom, and it should just come right out. Now, sometimes they can be a little rough. A uh, trick I like to use is to put it in the freezer or the fridge. you got to be a little bit careful with that though. You don't want it to completely freeze because the candle will crack on you if it gets too cold. So if you are going to do that, just put it in there just enough to get the mold nice and chilled and it should come right out. So we've got our mold release off the bottom. And our pillar candle slides right out. Get any excess off the wick. That's all there is to it. And that is how you make a basic pillar candle. You guys make sure you subscribe to my channel for more advanced candle making tips and tricks. Thanks for watching everybody.